Hey guys, today we're taking a look at Design Beast, the latest product from Paul Pana. Design Beast is like a one-stop shop for everything design related. You can make Instagram ads or Facebook ads on it. It has a photo retouching component. It has a logo designer, and it even has one of those platforms that takes still images and brings them into life and makes them look like they are moving. Design Beast does a lot of things. I paid for it with my own money. Today, we're gonna be looking at the $47 basic plan of Design Beast. Let's just dive right into it. So of course, when you go to the Design Beast website, you meet a landing page that looks like this one. And once you purchase Design Beast, of course, right away, the upsells start. It wouldn't be a Paul Pana product if it didn't try to upsell you every five seconds. I know a lot of you guys can't stand that. I can't stand it either. Let's just keep going. So here we are in the Design Beast app. This is the dashboard here, and there are so many tools in Design Beast, but you'll notice some of these, and particularly the ones I would have been interested in, are upgrades. So you really only get these six tools, which is the all-in-one design and mock-up engine um, with lots of templates. There's the slick image editor, so you can do some retouching. The one-click background remover, we're definitely gonna check out that today. The logo factory will also be looked at today. 3D Live motion photos we're gonna look at and magic object remover. We're gonna check out all these. Let's first start with the all-in-one design and mock-up engine. So here's the dashboard for the mock-up builder. You can see all these popular sizes are already available to you. Let's go with this Instagram ad. And here are a bunch of templates that we can choose from. I'm gonna go with one that has a lot of elements. Let's click this one here and we can add in our own photo. I'm gonna choose this one here. Oh. And we've already got our first fail. The image size is a maximum of three megabytes. That is pretty tiny. This is so disappointing to me because the photo I'm trying to upload is just a photo straight from my iPhone and it's too big to upload into this template. And that is so disappointing. I don't wanna to have to resize my photos just to bring them into Design Beast. Mm, not off to a great start here. Okay, I'm gonna do this. Let's skip and proceed to the editor because I think there's going to be a stock shot in here the design has loaded. This is where it kind of reminds me a lot of Canva. And I can see here when I look at this stock photo that is incorporated at this ad, this photo is very low res. So I'm just gonna start kind of playing around here and seeing what I can manipulate. All right, look, all of these shapes in here, I can move and I can change the color of them. All right, so we know we can play with all of the different elements in here. Let me take a look at the text options because you know that's always a big thing for me. How many fonts do we have in here? You guys, we have a fair amount of fonts in Design Beast. I would say I'm pleasantly surprised by that. It is a little weird. They are not in any sort of alphabetical order, <laughs> which is funny, but you can search by name. So I do think that that is pretty good. We can, of course, change the font color. Okay, and they have the whole color swatch here, so you can make the font any color you choose. You can import other images. You can add objects like these overlays, stickers. There are a lot of design elements in here. I would say that's pretty good. We can add a different background, these different interesting textures. And you can upload your own images. I already uploaded this thumbnail earlier when I was just playing around with this platform. Now, if we click on an individual object within this template, I get these icons up here. I can change the transparency of every object. I can reorder the layers, which is nice. I can send something to the back or bring it front. I can lock it in place, which I could see being very handy, and I can delete objects as well. All right, I'm not gonna do much else with this template. I think we got a good sense of what you can do with it. You can move everything around. You can change the color of things. You can reorder them. You can change the opacity of things. It's pretty good. Obviously, the one huge bummer is that I couldn't upload a photo that was taken with my iPhone into this template and that sucks, but everything else is actually not bad. The other thing I'm noticing here is that I haven't downloaded anything I've created yet on Design Beast, and I have this 600 credits. So my current 
use includes 600 credits a month and I need to upgrade to unlock unlimited credits. I don't know how many credits this template is going to cost me if I download it. Let's just find out together. Are you ready? I'm going to head on up to the top right of the screen, hit download. Let's do a PNG. I always like a PNG file. It's kind of a mid-size file and here it is. I would say in terms of clarity, the clarity on everything except for that photo is very good. But how many credits did it? Oh, it cost me one credit. I thought it was going to cost me like a hundred credits to download this one template. I wonder if different like features in Design Beast cost different credit values. You know, I know that I was upset about the photo, but I gotta be honest, this is not bad. 600 credits and I only used one for this template and I get a, a reset every month. That's, that's not bad. I'm gonna head back up to the dashboard here and let's try the logo factory. All right, let's, let's see how this goes. Okay, I can choose between a graphical and like a monogram. It's, they call it initials, but it's monogram, I think. Design or a signature. So it would be a stylized font. Let's go graphical, right? And then choose a niche. How about media? That sounds good. Okay, and it auto-generated all of these logos. I mean, honestly, you guys, these are not so bad. If you were just like starting your little business and you needed a logo, some of these designs are pretty interesting. Um, I do see like a lot of play button looks, but I do kind of like these stylized play buttons. Like this one's kind of nice. It's got a lot of motion. Let's hit this edit button. Okay. And now, all right, if I just select on one object like this, I can change the color, but I can't really see that color the color swatch thing. Do you see that way in there? Wait, how do I just want to let you know that I'm on Google Chrome here. This doesn't, this seems a little broken to me, but I think, let's see. Can I get in there and click those colors? Oh, there we go. Okay. If you really try hard, you can get that color and I want to change the color of this. Now let's change our text style. I really like these dynamic guides that let me know that I'm centered. I kind of like it. Like if you needed a logo really quickly or just on the fly, this is not bad. I'm into this. All right, let's hit download. And somehow again, it says I have 600 credits. This credit system is very confusing to me. And it's a very high res logo with the transparent background. Exactly as described, I'm Pleasantly surprised so far. All right, let's move on. Let's head on over to the magic object remover. What's interesting is it let me upload a photo that is the same size and dimension as that other photo I tried to upload with the Instagram ad. And this time it let me do it. So I don't really understand what the parameters or criteria is for this. It's very odd. So now we're going to try removing an object. I watched a tutorial on how to do this on their website. You just paint out what you don't want. In this case, I'm going to paint out this guy. Okay. It says that it su successfully removed the object, but I can't see like a big version of it to know if it worked and I have to download it to find out. It worked. I would say that that's not bad, you guys. I'm really surprised that that worked. Okay. All right, let's try this one. The one click background remover. All right, select an image to remove background automatically. A few tips to get the best results with background removal. One, the image should be in high res. The image must have at least one person or object in the picture. Got it. I got the perfect picture. I already picked it out. It worked pretty well, except just between his fingers here, we've still got some green going on. So let's zoom way in. I can only zoom in 200%. Hmm. All right, I'm gonna dial down this brush size to very, so small. I can't even see what I'm doing here. It's too small, I can't see. Really? All right, this one's kind of a little bit of a fail in this particular case because I really cannot get close enough to him to do a good job cutting out those fingers. 
Typically when you're cutting something off a solid background like this, if you are using Photoshop or if you're using a chroma key in a video editing system, you know, there's a lot of adjustments you can make in terms of how sensitive you want the cutout to be. And in here, there's very, very few adjustments that you can make, which is why I can't really clean up around his fingers. So I would say for me, this tool is not good enough, um, but some people like might be happy with it. Just for me, I know there's much better stuff out there. Next up, let's go to the slick image editor. Let's upload an image. All right, here is a picture of my husband and my adorable little dog with his tongue sticking out. Let's see what we can do here on these photos. Let's try auto smoothing. Oh, wait a second. It's supposed to be like a skin smoother, but look at what it's doing. That's so weird. That is not helpful. What if we do manual smoothing? Wait, what? What is this supposed to be doing? Okay, the smoothing does not work. Here we can crop, resize, and rotate. Pretty basic, okay, fine. Effects. These are like different filters. My question is, is once I apply a filter, can I make any other adjustments? No. So it's like full application of the filter and that's it. Enhancement. Okay. This is where we can like do contrast adjustments, saturation. I do like making this more contrasty object aware crop. What does that mean? It says get cropped images. Is it going to cut stuff out of this? I've been sitting here for a long time watching this little circle spin around. I don't think whatever's supposed to happen here is going to happen. I'm sorry, but it just seems a little glitchy. There's just like obviously something wrong. So this slick image editor is not great. I'm sure you're not surprised to hear me say the skin smoother like didn't work at all. This object aware crop. It's a mystery. I don't know what it's supposed to do because it just got hung up. And then these filters you can apply are mm, not great. Let's just move on. All right, let's move on to the 3D live motion photos. You may remember that I reviewed a product called Photo Vibrance a while back on my channel, which takes your still images and like really brings them to life. I loved that product. I thought it worked so incredibly well. Now Design Beast has a competing product. Let's see how it stands up. I'm gonna select live motion photos and I'm going to upload an image here. Let's pick the same photo that I used in Photo Vibrance so we can compare apples to apples and we'll make it square just like Photo Vibrance. I'm gonna hit proceed. Just looking at these tools here, it looks like it works about the same way. First, what we need to do is pin our points. So basically what we wanna do is add dots wherever you don't want the motion to happen. Okay, so I've made all of my pinpoints around our kayaker. And now what we want to do is draw in arrows in the direction we want the motion to happen in our, in this case, in the water. So I'm going to hit the arrow tool and I'm going to draw these little arrows in the same direction as the water's kind of going. It seems to be a lot more laggy than photo vibrance which kind of hurts your precision while you're making your arrows. Okay, I've got a bunch of arrows here. I'm gonna hit this play button at the bottom center of the screen, see what happens. I'm gonna do a side-by-side -side right here with what this animation looks like versus what I got out of Photo Vibrance using the exact same photo. Um, you can see the wave formations in Photo Vibrance, in my opinion. I mean, I did the same exact thing are just so much superior. Look at this hard line I'm getting here and look at these sharp points. I'm getting over here. It just seems to me that the motion on this isn't as finessed as what photo vibrance can do. So even though like the workflow is pretty much exactly the same, the technology definitely seems to be different and I prefer photo vibrance a lot more. So what do I think of Design Beast? I would say I'm pleasantly surprised by it only because I've reviewed so many Paul Pana products on this channel 
and I've never really been that impressed with them. They're just not really strong, stable platforms with a lot of customizability. If you watched my review of Video Creator, you saw that I was really disappointed in how little I could change the templates that came with that product. If you're interested, I'll link to that right here. I go into much more detail on that. But for this one, I'd say there's definitely a few highlights in it. With that Instagram ad we built, I couldn't believe how much I could customize in those templates, even though it was really disappointing that I couldn't upload a higher res photo into those templates. Um, but I did like that there were so many font options and I could change the colors of everything and reorder them and add and delete. I did like that very much. The one click background remover, I gotta be honest with you, I purchased Design Beast yesterday and I was playing around with it. And when I tried to use it yesterday with the same photo, it flat out didn't work. So I was actually very surprised that it worked at all today, even though I didn't think it worked that great. The magic object remover was another one that did not work for me yesterday, but today it actually worked pretty well. So if it's like working, I actually think that's not a bad tool. It was so easy to use and it did a pretty good job. The logo factory actually wasn't bad. I felt like some of the stock imagery that they used to incorporate into the logos was different from what I typically see. So I did like that a lot. I liked that you could change the position of the fonts in relation to the images and you could change the colors of everything. And then the logo that got created once you exported was very high res. And so I thought that was actually pretty good. The slick image editor was just a total disaster. I felt like the features in there didn't work and there were filters that you could apply to your photo, but you didn't have the ability to adjust how affected that photo would be by that filter. It was either like totally on 100% or not at all. And I just, that thing was not great. And then in 3D live motion photos, it worked but not as good as Photo Vibrance. You know, the thing about Design Beast and products like this, where they're just like a one-stop shop for all your needs, is that they're kind of like a jack of all trades, but a master of none. You know, these Instagram ad templates are never gonna be as good as what you can create in Canva. The photo editing is never gonna be as good as what you can do in Photoshop. And these live photos are never gonna be as good as what you can do in Photo Vibrance. So I don't wanna dissuade you from buying design beast but I just want you to be aware that it doesn't do everything as well as like a standalone product that's dedicated to just doing that task so it's kind of a trade-off you get a lot of stuff for a bundle but it's not as good as if you had like the very specific products that design beast is definitely trying to replace you guys let me know have you used design beast what do you like about it have you sprung for the upgrades are the upgrades worth it let me know in the comments. I love hearing what you think as much as I love telling you what I think. Thank you so much for watching today and I will see you again.